So at the end of last year, I put out a video entitled The Weird Game of This Cheese Drum Kit. Broadly, it was an examination of experimental musical performance, and how we might think of said performance as a kind of social game, how it seeks to examine and poke and prod at all these different structures, interpersonal relationships and the like. Now look, I still really enjoy talking about video games in a more traditional sense as well, but after six and a half years of doing that, this piece, tapping into my musical passions in a way I've only rarely been able to do on this channel, served as a change of pace I really needed to just go with, a labour of love, and ended up being by far the most fun I've had writing a piece in god knows how long. Going into this, I really did not care about view counts on this thing at all. A prudent mindset perhaps, seeing as the video is my worst performing for a while by some margin, but you know, rather than see it that way, I was honestly just thrilled that I could get 9,000 people to indulge me on a video about free improvisation. And not only that, the fun I had with it seemed to resonate with that limited audience. I was terrified to put that video out there, but the response was overwhelmingly positive, with many calling it my best video. I worked so goddamn hard on that thing, and it was incredibly heartening and humbling to see that people were willing and able to connect with something they may not have had much interest in to start with. So, positive experience all round, right? Well, yes and no. In fact, while that video represented feelings of freedom and joy, the reason that it brought those things to mind is because it also highlighted in no uncertain terms just how exhausted I've grown with the platform otherwise, and the surrounding bullshit that one has to deal with in order to keep the lights on. It forced me to deeply reflect and ask, is this something I can really keep doing going forward? In short, while I remain immensely grateful to have been able to do what I'm passionate about for as long as I have, YouTube has drained me both physically and emotionally, and I'm kind of at a crossroads as to where things go from here, whether the channel continues or I look for something else. See, I've mentioned it a lot before, but the way that you or I might define success and growth could not be more different from how YouTube views those concepts, countering those real positive feelings, that pride in your work, with big bold lettering telling you how badly your video is bombing at all times, how badly you're failing as a creator, and actively discouraging thinking outside the box, all while being the platform that claims to care so much about creator mental health. But you know, I'm used to that by now. No, the thing that really highlighted to me just how tired I am of this whole process was the thought that god, good thing I didn't have a sponsor on this one, otherwise I would be freaking out right now. Look, I could write a whole essay on the misconceptions around sponsorships and the various shite I've had to deal with in that regard, hell maybe I'll write out something more detailed for patrons, but let me just put it like this, what started as a helpful little boost to keep the lights on has, over time, left me with pretty deep feelings of unhappiness around making videos. And I'm not saying that all sponsor agencies I've worked with are like this, a bunch have been really great and patient, understanding of the creative process and letting me just do my thing, but overall negotiating and carrying out these deals has become more than a little dehumanising, demeaning. It's seen some companies making increasingly pervasive demands in an attempt to control aspects of the content itself, all while constantly nagging people into taking lower and lower rates. I mean, I've been told, um, your channel isn't doing so well, so it isn't worth much to us. Begging the question of why they'd want to advertise on said channel to begin with, as the at bursting point influencer marketing bubble has resulted in complete unsustainable saturation. The negotiating leverage squarely in the hands of the agencies doling these deals out, while creators that, like me, lack representation, are left constantly worrying how badly they're undervaluing themselves. And it all amounts to a situation where, no matter how hard you may have worked on a video, remaining in a state of perpetual crunch, working seven days a week with multiple sleepless nights, no matter how proud you are of the end product and how many people actually like it, you still get hit with the double whammy of YouTube's negativity and the feeling of not meeting sponsor expectations. Personally, I couldn't be happier with where this channel is at in terms of views. I mean, 9,000 people watched that cheese video. That kind of number staggers me to this day. I don't know why so many people are interested. It's just that that kind of of view count is not the kind that sponsors are looking for, that the platform deems as anything other than a failure. They just want pure numbers, and that mindset grinds you down after a while. The pride I used to feel in publishing a finished project has, thanks to these exterior factors, turned to anxiety and dread. 
The sponsor stuff in particular has had a detrimental enough effect on making the videos, without feeling like the money being offered is really worth it, pro tip you'd have to be a fool to pursue YouTube for financial gain, that after almost 7 years, it's gotten me to really examine where I'm at with all this stuff, if there is a future at all in this. And look, no one in their right mind expects to be doing YouTube for the rest of their life, at least I hope anyway, and I promise I'm not trying to moan here or anything, I've just been pragmatically weighing up if my time is better spent elsewhere at this point. I could leave this, go work at some other place, doing just one of the many jobs you end up doing when this becomes your full time gig, only working a fraction of the hours I currently do, and making more money for it. Trust me when I say that's a pretty harrowing realisation to come to about something that you've poured yourself into for well over half a decade. And yet that fucking cheese video, completely free from the shackles of corporate or platform expectations, showed me why I still love doing this. It was free I do not give a shit about views, I don't want to become some personality, I just love digging deep into these weird pockets of art and culture I'm passionate about and presenting interesting stories about them. That video reminded me of the old days of doing this, where a smaller but dedicated audience would actively have to seek out my videos, and so were more likely to really engage with them, rather than the situation you sometimes find once the sub counter ticks over a certain point, where people instead react angrily to having YouTube force a video upon them. I think I always kind of mourned that feeling of community that defined a lot about those early days, and it's a community that I've kind of always had with Patreon, where there still remains that ideal that technically it doesn't matter if a video gets a million views or a few hundred, as long as those patrons are happy, that's all that matters. The truth is, of course, a little more nuanced than that. Part of why I've had to go with sponsors over the years is that it's become harder to grow the Patreon over time. But while I say this constantly, and some of you are probably tired of it by now, I say it because because I mean it. Without your support, I would not have been able to do this for as long as I have, and I cannot thank you enough for your continued generosity over all these years. So after all that preamble, here's where I'm at. I want to make more videos like that cheese kit one, and judging from many comments, that's what a lot of you want too. My vision for the channel going forward is that writing on games isn't limited to video games alone. There exists competition and play throughout art and culture of all kinds, and alongside the other more traditional videos, which I still enjoy making and aren't going anywhere, I want to uncover and explore the games that exist all around us. The problem, as with all creative endeavours worth their salt, is the small matter of sustainability, both financial and personal. And that is where you come in. That Patreon community is where I want to focus my efforts going forward. I already have various rewards and exclusive content I've been trying to build up over the last wee while, and I intend to keep adding to it. I know it's cliche to bring this kind of thing up, but maybe it's cliche for a reason. Even with that cheese kit video tanking so hard in terms of views, if just 10% of the people who clicked on that video and seemingly enjoyed it were to pledge $1 a month, this wouldn't even be a conversation. I would suddenly have so much more time to really explore the topics I have in mind. I wouldn't need to adhere to daft sponsor deadlines or expectations. And also, even if I did take a sponsor from time to time, you wouldn't even know because all patrons at whatever level get access to a separate upload that's completely free from ads of any kind. I do have a few sponsor obligations left in the pipeline, but after that, I'll be significantly re-evaluating my relationship with these companies in the coming months. And I won't lie, it's worrying, because while the money they offer is frankly pittance compared to how big these brands are, I still live very much month to month on this stuff, and so turning down any money is a scary prospect. At some stage though, I really do have to consider my health and well-being. I'm in my 30s now, I can't keep doing this with the same ruthless blinkered focus I could way back when. Speaking of which, I guess I think of this as a more controversial point than it probably should be, but I just want to be a bit more comfortable doing this. Right now, it is not healthy. Like I say, it's just a given at this stage that I work absurd hours, seven days a week at this stuff, I haven't gotten nearly enough sleep in god knows how long, and I'm finding less and less time away from word processors, editing software, and increasingly contractual back and forths. I need to cut down how much I'm working, and strengthening that safety net of a community funded this work themselves, as well as the freedom from a lot of the corporate bullshit I've outlined here, will allow me a flexibility I haven't had since this became my job, which I'm hoping will ultimately result in a higher calibre of work, even if it's viewed by less people. And to be abundantly clear, I certainly do not think I'm in any way special in this regard. I mean, it's kind of astounding how basically every year-end roundup I've watched in the last few weeks has had the creator bringing up a similar kind of exhaustion, of feeling like they need to fight more and more against the platform 
platform that wants to turn itself into TikTok, and unfortunately will likely continue to punish those who produce longer, more thoughtful videos going forward. As I always say in these update videos, if not me, find a creator who has brought you joy or comfort or informed you about something and consider supporting them. You know, we're all in this together. But yeah, sorry about this weird video. I don't do this kind of update very often because I really don't like being so blatant in asking for help. Whatever happens with the channel's future though, this whole thing remains the most meaningful endeavour I've ever undertaken in my life and I am genuinely, unbelievably thankful for your support in whatever form it's taken. I have a lot of ideas for cool, left field things going forward and I'm hoping I get to realise them, but only on terms and a timeline that's comfortable for me. If that sounds cool to you, then consider supporting. If not, that's cool too. Either way, I'm off to work on other videos. Thanks for watching and I will see you all next time.